Hi everyone, so we're, as you can guess it, at another field trip. So I went to visit Natorps this morning, uh, and this is what Natorps looks like. I'm not from the area, it's someone's last name, so if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, I apologize. But uh, I discovered Natorps a few years ago, and Every garden center has its little specialty, you know, it may be really cute inside, they may have a lot of like decorative items. This garden center is kind of, it's kind of no frills, although the thing they kind of specialize in is just a ton of plants and varieties. And so there's several acres, yes I said acres, of greenhouses here. Um, and it's kind of like that line in the movie Simba where um, the king tells Simba everything the light touches is your kingdom. Well, everything the light touches in this garden center is plants. And so their website says they have over one million plants in one location. So it's really nice. I don't know how much footage I'll be shooting inside. This is the first Saturday they are open this season, so it might get a little crazy. There's not a ton of people here right now, but there's probably been 10 cars show up just since I pulled in a few minutes ago. So let's go check it out and I'll take some footage and hopefully we can find a tree. So I always like to come early to the garden centers. Um, they don't have a ton of stuff out now because it is still early. We still have a long time to our frost date, our last frost date. But like, look at these topiaries. Topiaries, these are deer. They have a butterfly over here. And a ton of different Japanese maples. And so, this is why I like to come early to the garden centers because you can get all the best stuff before everybody else gets their hands on it. So they have a really, really large perennial section here, about any perennial you can think of, which is really nice. The only few things I'm looking at today are uh, peonies, uh, potentially, some Ito peonies, and I don't know if they have them out yet, and my tree. I'm not looking for many perennials but I do have a coupon for 20% off one item, so I'm gonna see what I could use that on. So I think I found the peony I'm gonna go with. It's called Canary Brilliance, it's $65. Ito peonies are really expensive, but these are really, really nice size and will be able to provide some nice blooms for me this year. And so this is like right up my color alley. It's like a yellow orangey bloom, uh, and it will look nice in that perennial border I am doing. And so we're gonna pick out the best looking one of these and add it to my cart. So this is the one I'm going with and it already has some buds here. I will probably keep it a little protected for a few more weeks in the garage if it's getting below freezing. But the nice thing about Ito peonies, which I like, is they don't have to be staked. And so this will be the first one I have in my garden. Uh, my other peonies that I have, I just hate having to stake them. And so I think this will be a good option. It is, Ito peonies are a combination between the herbaceous peony and the tree peony. It's a hybrid, and so the stems are a lot stronger and hold up their blooms well. So you can see here a lot of empty space uh, later in the year. Uh, this is completely full, this area is particularly is completely full of roses. So we're gonna go check out a few of the roses. I don't need any roses. Uh, but I like to see them because usually they're further along since these came from the greenhouse and some may even already be in bloom. I don't see any, but this is so exciting for a gardener this time of year, especially at the greenhouses. They also have a lot of proven winners varieties at this greenhouse, which I really like. This is the Oh So Easy Italian Ice Roses, uh, which are a beautiful color here. I have two of these in my garden. I had them in containers and they didn't do great. And so I moved them to the landscape last year. And so they should do pretty good this year. Lemon zest is a really pretty one. And mango salsa, I also have under the magnolia out front. So check out this butterfly. I've personally never seen anything like this. It's really cool. And they have like a flower shaped one up here. So these must be like special things they get in early in the season. I wasn't looking at anything like this last year, but I also didn't notice it. This is really incredible. The pricing on this is probably really expensive. Um, $735, so that is a no. <laughs> I also have a really nice selection of different pots. I've never purchased any pots here, but they got a lot of different colors, both plastic and ceramic, which is nice if you need a pot while you're here to plant something in. 
Now, one thing, they have some massive trees at this location. They are a grower, and so they grow a lot of their plants. I'm sure they bring some in as well, but they grow a lot of the perennials and shrubs and stuff. And they do have a huge, as far as the eye can see back there, uh, tree farm, which is really interesting. So I'm gonna walk around and see if there's any cool things I can find, leave my cart, so I don't have to worry about it bumping on this gravel path, and we'll see what we find. It's not my favorite time to pick out trees uh, because there's no leaves on them, but for blooming trees, they are in bloom, but they have some really nice multi-trunk trees as well. There were some hydrangeas on standard back there, and I did see online that they had some paper bark maples somewhere, which I wanted to check out, and uh, some multi-trunk paper bark maples at that. So we're gonna look around and see what we can find. So these are actually the paper bark maples, and you can see their bark is exfoliating a little bit. These are the single trunk ones. They do have the multi-trunk ones here, which I'm not as impressed with. I thought they would be multi-liters from the bottom, but they're one tree that's just been pruned really low to be trained into a multi-trunk form. They have a lot of nice little smaller trees. If you're looking like the sour wood was also an option, it gets a little bigger than what I needed in my space, but they have smaller royal raindrops, crab apples, like this is why I wanted this tree. I am just so terrified by disease and crab apples that I don't want to risk putting it in my garden. Uh, I try to stick with stuff that's hardy and don't necessarily have any issues. One day when I have a larger property, we can put some things like that out there that um, if I lose them, I'm not as concerned about it. But since I have a small space, I try to be really intentional with that space and put things in there that I'm not gonna have a whole lot of trouble with later down the road. I'm also going to pick up a boxwood topiary. I've wanted one in my yard for quite a long time. They have several different sizes and they're really, really difficult to find anywhere outside of the spring season. And so I think I'm going to end up putting this also in the perennial border and I can tuck perennials under it. I'm not sure yet. It may live in a container on the back patio, but I've wanted one for a really long time and I've not been able to find them easily. So we're gonna grab it. Those of you that are into growing vegetables, um, they do have one of the biggest vegetable plant selections I've ever seen at a garden center, including tomatoes. A lot of tomatoes you won't find elsewhere and that you grow from seed traditionally, like mortgage lifter and stuff like that. Uh, really incredible selection. And here are all the perennials, and we got fruit trees, some brunera down here. It's just really, the selection is really great. Look at all those hookra over there. I'm gonna take you over there right quick. So this is why I want to do a multicolored hookra display. Like look at all of these options and colors. It's really crazy that they can bring so much interest and just be foliage. And a lot of them can take full sun in our zone anyway. So it's just really incredible, the selection of different colors they have here as well. These are actually tiarellas, um, or they're hookarellas, which is a combination between hookara and tiarellas. Uh, the Red Rover that I have is also a tiarella, but they have really interesting um, lobed leaves, the tiarellas do got another cart because these things happen when I go to garden centers. Um, and I got five green giant arborvitae to finish off the hedge in the back. I've seen them a slightly larger at like lows, but the pricing's higher. And if you're going to purchase these, I don't recommend spending more. They grow three to five foot a year, even their first year in my experience. And you'll just be wasting that money, throwing it away because they'll grow to the size that you want in a season anyway. All right, everyone, there's not a day when I make trips like these that I don't wish I had a truck. So I have Boxwood Standard, Baptisia, five Green Giant or Arborvitaes, the tree, and the peony. We're gonna try and fit in my car. The nice place about this uh, garden center is they will load things for you, like the Boxwood I have is super heavy and they gotta go gather the tree. And so you pull around to the drive-through and to the extent you need anything that's loaded, they'll load it for you. So we're gonna go do that now. I also keep a moving blanket in my car at all times because my car is a plant hauler. It's pretty much its primary responsibility and it gets dirty.
Well, that is it, you guys. This SUV is loaded. Um, it smells really great in here with these Arbor Vitae. I'm gonna go home and grab some lunch and then we'll get this unloaded and look at all we got. All right, everyone, so we're back home and I've gotten everything unloaded. I'm really excited about designing this space now. It's been kind of like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I needed some structure along this fence. So as I've mentioned, we're gonna bring the fence line out a little bit, at least six foot deep. Uh, it's probably, four-ish now so it's going to come out about another two feet and this is what I've gathered so far. So I picked up this blue arrow juniper from Lowe's the other day. I haven't been able to find them locally at a garden center and I was worried that I wouldn't find one and I spotted that one on a lunch trip and so I picked it up and it is going to go somewhere along this fence line maybe about right where it is uh, just for some upright blue foliage against the green giants. We have the peony I picked up. It's gonna go over here on this side as well. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where yet, but it could pair really nicely with this blue foliage and the yellow blooms that are gonna be on it, the yellow orangey blooms. I'm gonna put a picture if I can find one on the screen of what this looks like in bloom. I know I showed the tag at the garden center, but the pictures I looked at online were much better looking than what the garden center was showing. I have the blue, Blueberry Decadence Sunday Baptisia. As you know, I have a lemon, strawberry lemonade Baptisia uh, on either side of the stair entrance to my patio. This one, I think, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be expanding this bed right here over. And so I think it's gonna be a centerpiece in this area. I'm just not sure yet, but I did want another Baptisia over here. I really wanted one, there's one called Dark Chocolate, but I've been unable to find it anywhere locally. Uh, it's really hard to find locally. It is available online, but it's a little more uh, than I wanted to pay for it, particularly given the size. I did find some bigger sizes, but it was still about $40. This one was 24. It's a beautiful blue bloom. It will look just as great and provide some upward um, structure in the center of this little flower bed area. And what I'm really excited about, and I know not everyone loves boxwoods, but this boxwood, I got this topiary. They had bigger ones than this, but the bigger ones was a little too expensive that I wanted to pay since I already had a tree picked out today. If I wasn't getting the tree, I probably would have got the bigger boxwood because it was two foot wide all the way around. This one is still a really nice size. And it's probably going to go along here. I thought about sticking it uh, in the center of this bed when it's created, but it's probably gonna stay, it may stay kind of where it's at in this little section of the bed. I do have the um, hibiscus here. Those are cherry chocolate, and those will get really big and have a little dark foliage there. But, I'm just trying to think of how I'm gonna space this out. I do want some little evergreens here and there because this is going to be a complete perennial bed otherwise, and it would just be bare in winter. I do have the Steady Eddie Viburnum here that I need to remember. Um, it's just twigs because I planted it so small last year, but it is getting some growth on it. But uh, that will get pretty large, and so I need to remember that that's gonna be there. And so I think the placement that I kind of have right now is maybe what I'm gonna go with. Not sure it'll work on it when I get the perennials in uh, or I'll think about it the next couple days because I really wanna go ahead and get these in the ground to the extent I can before it gets any warmer. It's just generally good to plant things earlier in the spring so they can acclimate and root in before we get our really hot weather. And so uh, I'm gonna be deciding over these over the next week and I may plant these next weekend um, where I'm gonna put them and then work the plants around them that I'm getting. Um, I am going to be shooting my everything I'm adding to my garden this year or what I've ordered and what's uh, going to be arriving video in the coming week. I've got everything I think that I'm going to have, at least my major orders. And so I'll sit down and create that and that will be really fun, I think. When I went and grabbed all the pictures uh, from Proven Winners and uh, the nursery Terra Nova that I got stuff from, I put them up in a grid on my computer and the color combinations were just really great and I'm really excited about it. So uh, I did put the green giants over here for now. Those will go in the back 
uh, in the coming week too, and I'll go ahead and get those planted so they can get acclimated and they'll be put on drip. Uh, drip irrigation is not going to be activated for a few more weeks though. So uh, I'm really excited about these. As I mentioned, they grow incredibly quickly. So to the extent you're going to purchase any, uh, just save you a little money and get the smaller ones. I actually paid almost $20 a piece for 12 inch plants four years ago when I put mine in the ground and these were 35 and they're already three and a half foot tall maybe. So these will catch up to the other ones in no time hopefully and the star of the show my japanese evening light snowbell uh, is going to be replacing the dead red bud uh, it already provides a lot of upward structure in this location i'm going to put it exactly where the red bud is it gets uh, 10 to 15 foot wide and so it might kind of gently brush this moon gate, which is great and something I would be looking forward to anyway. Uh, that means it's also not going to intrude too much on this path. Uh, and it will get pretty tall and just skinny. And it has the dark purple foliage. I'll put a picture on the screen and then those really pretty um, snowbell blooms in early spring. I'm not sure if I'll get any blooms this year. Uh, the guy did say that it blooms in May-ish and so that's a later blooming tree which is great which means frost shouldn't bother it too much but I'm going to probably get this one planted this weekend to the extent I can. I need to go get a little bit of compost just bag compost for now for the tree planting. I don't want to you don't want to incorporate too much of that into your natural soil. Uh, especially since I have clay and it already holds water, you don't want to encourage it to hold any more water. But I want some good nutrition there to give it its best um, chance of success this summer. And so I'll pick up a little compost. I did pick up some Proven Winners Biotone starter fertilizer uh, while I was at Natorp. So I run out. I go through several bags every year with how much I've been planting. And so I'm going to give it a generous... Um, spread of biotone starter fertilizer and i think this is going to be a really nice accent tree for this tiny location so natorps i am glad i got to take you there uh, it is really large and first of all i want to say that for those of you who live in locations of the united states or elsewhere who do not have nurseries of that size i completely understand uh, i am from a location in alabama where we don't have any nurseries um, within any good driving distance uh, that are quick to get to and are that massive. And so while I know there are a lot of people out there who do not have access to those type of nurseries, don't be afraid to purchase things online from reputable uh, online resellers. Uh, as you know, I purchased a ton of tiny shrubs last year. I put 200 tiny shrubs in my garden. I've got a few more coming this year from Great Garden Plants. I have had really great success with plants from Great Garden Plants. And so to the extent you don't have a nursery available to purchase these things, it doesn't mean you can't have a beautiful garden. You can buy stuff online, uh, grow it small. Plants actually acclimate really well and they're small and that's one reason I planted a lot of smaller shrubs last year. Uh, partly because I didn't want to be digging in our heavy clay soil and all of that soil is just, it's just, it's heavy clay, so it holds water, but it's also really heavy to the gardener to dig out. And so I didn't want to have to deal with that. But you can buy perennials online uh, from reputable dealers. Just don't be afraid to get out there and find something you love, especially if you don't have a great garden center locally to you. I just want to encourage you to get out there to your garden centers early this spring. Uh, to the extent you have them available. And if you don't have local garden centers available, still find a reputable online dealer of plants uh, that you trust to send you good things and order what you can now. I'm not sure how crazy this gardening season is going to be. Uh, the past couple years have been a little crazy because so many people are getting into gardening. So that to the extent you have your heart set on something, uh, I very much get my heart set on certain items. And then I have to have them and so that's one reason i also purchase a lot of things online because the local garden centers sometimes are a little delayed getting varieties in because they typically sell larger plants or they grow varieties that they've just stuck with and accustomed to and have done well for them over several years and so new varieties particularly are very hard to find and that's one of the reasons i buy a lot online 
but there are also great varieties in your local garden center and talk to the, your representatives there and ask them what might work for you. I'm really obviously excited. It is still pretty cold today. Uh, it is currently 47 degrees. Uh, this coming week is supposed to warm up, but it's supposed to rain a lot, which means I need to try and get as much done this weekend, even though it's still in the 40s. Um, so if it's raining, the stuff can get settled in over the next week. And also I won't be able to come outside and do a lot of gardening with it raining like it is. So I know this video is getting long. Uh, great things to come. Thank you for following along and subscribing. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, guys. Bye.